Inclusion Awareness uh, Day, our event. Um, and thank you for Danielle Moeller, our Director of Clinical Services, for um, hosting this event for us. So there's mostly residents in the audience, but I see a few community members and a board member, so I did want to welcome you to Kendall at Lexington if this is the first time you've been here. Um, my name is Erica Terman, I'm the Director of Marketing, and if you have any marketing needs, I encourage you to reach out to my team, and we'll be happy to give you a tour. Um, we have with us today Mandy McComas, so the, um, a face many of you may know, but her bio is so long I had to write it down to make sure I credentialed her correctly. So Mandy is a, register, a distinguished registered nurse, a former Rockbridge County Emergency Medical Services provider, the past director of quality and compliance here at Kendall at Lexington, a public health manager, and certified falls prevention specialist, which is why she's here today. So we're super grateful for Mandy, and we'll just turn it over to her for our two notes. And also, after the event, please stay. Come out to the hallway. We have several tables. The pharmacy's here. There's a Kalex table and the fitness center is here, yeah. and therapy. <coughs> of 65 and older in more of that capacity than I have in any other. So just knowing the end results sometimes are just, they're just really devastating. So anything I can do to help prevent something like that from happening, or the team here. Closer. Okay, or the team here. Okay, am I doing better? Yes. They did not give me any training on this. <laughs> so it's not, not very fair, but anyway. So, so that's the thing, I just really want to do whatever we can do and the team here at Kendall to prevent a fall from happening. All right, sound good? Mm -hmm. So is everybody here for the right reason? <laughs> yes, not to fall. Okay, so that's where, that's where we're gonna start. So a couple things, um, I really like fall. Fall is my favorite time of year, favorite time. Um, and I do not, by any means want to scare anybody today or have uh, or you know add a fear of falling if you don't already have that. <laughs> I want to make sure that you do not get a fear of falling. If you do, guess what it increases? Falling. Your chance of falling, right? So if you think about something all the time, it is a really good opportunity for it to happen. Okay? So make sure that at the end of this you know, we go through a couple steps if you would like to talk a little bit more about it, just in case you do have a fear of falling and there's some recommendations that I can share with you, okay? Sometimes those are personal. They don't fit the whole, you know, the whole group. So, you know, just because one person feels that way doesn't mean it's someone else's. So it's important for you to share those if you would like to, okay? But the really big thing I wanna make sure that you know is I don't want you to leave here today with a fear of falling, okay? So that, that is really important. So the next thing, um, what can we do to prevent falls? 
Stay in your chair. <laughs> Stay in the chair. I'm, I'm gonna make a really loud buzz noise. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Actually, being more mobile helps you decrease your opportunities for falling. Good one, though. <laughs> there's Set never, up. there's never a wrong answer or a dumb question, right? So, so what else can you do? What do you think? Prevention. Look where you're going. Turn on the lights. Good job. Look where you're going. Very good job, right? So, those are some things that we can do, and we'll go through some other things because first we'll talk about what we can do to prevent it. Where do you think most falls happen? And. In the bathroom. <laughs> Very good. So most falls do happen in the bathroom. I wonder why. <laughs> Slick. Very good. And then earlier you said lighting. So that's always a concern. Time. Nothing soft in the bathroom. Nothing soft in the bathroom. I agree. Right? All toilets come hard and cold. Yes. I agree. 100%. Edges of rugs. Yeah. Very good. Edges of rugs. I feel like I'm right on point with my presentation today based on what you're saying. Okay. So other things that can cause falls, probably medications, things of that nature. But first, let's talk about throw rugs. They're beautiful, aren't they? How many of you, if you're willing, will raise your hand to say, tell me if you have one throw rug positioned anywhere in your household? Wow. So for the ones that did not raise their hand, if you didn't just because you didn't want me to know, <laughs> or if you didn't because you don't have a throw rug, that is great. You know, throw rugs are one of the worst. I have tripped multiple times in my house this week because of a throw rug, but it's really pretty. <laughs> so it's for my husband. <laughs> and so he says it's a dirt, uh, a dirt catcher. But throw rugs are a big hazard, but a lot of us do have them. Now, does that mean that we have to get rid of all of them? No, we just have to navigate around them safely, right? And be cautious with them. So there's ways around this that you can still have your throw rug. Maybe just not have it in the area that you walk a lot, okay? Agreed? Yeah, okay, good. So that's, that's one thing, all right? And then another one, like we said earlier, um, the most common location for falls is in the bathroom. So with that, there was like, um, I think 76% of falls that occurred out of the 76% in the household, 35% of them were in the bathroom. And then there was one population greater than the other one, male versus female. Does anybody want to guess who had the higher population for the fall of the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah. Female. Oh. It's really hard for me to swallow that. Yeah. <laughs> Females. <laughs> so I was like, great. So, but it is because you know you have to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and then they put you on medications that make you do what? Go to the bathroom more often. Yeah. So there's all these things that factor into this that you know increase these numbers, and that's what we do see. Okay. So those are some pretty common things, and also just in the bathroom. So prevention, okay? What do we do to stop that? Because we know that the falls gonna occur in the bathroom. So do you have like extra devices that you can put in for like grip bars, things of that nature? Yeah, and, and do you have those? Or you know, are you utilizing them? No, yes, maybe. Yeah, a lot of a lot of yeses, and then a lot of people just stared at me like, no, <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> so, but there are ways, right? And then just still, I know there's also people from the community, so it's important too because we have a lot of, you know, the bathroom set up with the bathtubs that you have to do what? Step, step into. Yeah. So a lot of falls occur stepping into that bathroom and into that bathtub. Here at Kendall, all you have to do is ask, and they'll give you a grab bar for every woman. Right. And by the end of this, I will make sure that there's at least 30 orders that go in. <laughs> grab bar, okay? So, because then I get to leave, right? <laughs> so, and Jan can't find me, or, or Todd. So, other things. So, here, you know, ideas around the grab bars. Some of the worst falls, and when I say worst, 
the patient suffered head injury, chest injury, just from trying to go to the bathroom, like from a standing fall, crushed her chest, punctured her lung, and had a head bleed. Is that not awful? Yeah, so just falling on the toilet, really bad. So when you think about, how many of you watch football? I don't, but yes. So these people hit each other all the time, right? That's why I don't watch it, it's just too traumatic. So everybody's like hitting each other. So you think about the force of those people hitting each other, that's kind of what that force is for someone who is 65 and older who falls from a standing position. Because as we age, our bones get brittle, yes. They get weaker. And it really depends also too on your medical history, your, what your parents and grandparents gave you, right? So we're already set up for you know, an incident that could cause um, quite a traumatic experience just from a standing fall. You know, maybe if we fell off the roof, we would think that's pretty traumatic. But just remember, falling on a surface in a household can be just as traumatic. That's why we want you to be super cautious, all right? So our bones get brittle, a lot of times we take blood thinners. So then what does that help do? Makes us bleed more freely, correctly. So it's the slightest thing will cause a bruise and, and more bleeding. So we just wanna be, be cautious. The other thing is you age, your brain gets smaller, <laughs> right? Even though as we get wiser, <laughs> our brain, so we don't need as much room because <laughs> our brain gets smaller, but we do get wiser. But as your brain gets smaller, it allows a lot of vulnerable areas if you fall for like those veins and arteries that feed your brain that are coming from your skull it allows them to kind of shear and that's why people have head bleeds sometimes a lot easier just from a standing fall okay and if you fall on something such as the toilet and then you hit the floor that's two falls right two for one Okay, you hit the toilet and then you hit the ground. So that it's really, really hard on your body. So again, the reason that we want to just bring that knowledge to you, but also not make it fearful for you to go to the bathroom. Okay? <laughs> so I just want to make sure that you know I, I'm getting that across as well. But look, more grab bars, and you can get a three toilet paper holder, which I really enjoyed about that picture, you know. So you can put in requests for those as well. Okay? Uh, so again, prevention, stepping out of the uh, shower earlier, you mentioned it's slick, right? And then also, you know how you get the scum build up on the floors? That actually is just a slick, you know? That is really, really hazardous. So you, you just really wanna make sure that you're on a, um, you know, an, uh, a surface that is whatever you can do to make it unslick, right? So, use the, the uh, removers and things like, and I have a picture to kind of show you the difference in them too, just because that, that really does add to that slickness of the, um, the surface. The other thing I like about this one too is it's got that shower um, rug in there. So those are like more adhesive to the floor. They're made for the bathroom. They're thinner, so there's not like a step up, an edge to worry about tripping on and you can step right out of the shower and be on that and dry right off and not worry about you know um, having to, to fall or anything. Because if you throw a towel down on the floor, what could happen? Yeah, it's gonna slide and you can trip over it because it's gonna bunch up and everything else. So I think my twin daughters do that to me on purpose sometimes to see if mommy will fall across the towel. Because <laughs> they put the towels everywhere in there. So those are really, really good rugs and they, they're very good for protecting you from falling. Other things you can do is like anything that you need to reach, you can keep it at eye level, right? If you're reaching up high or you're stupid down low, what can happen? Yeah, you can hurt your back, you can fall. The other thing is I've taken care of people over the years who would be like down, just reaching in the back of a cabinet and their hip come out. Is that not awful? <laughs> I mean, but that's what happens because you put extreme pressure on your body and it can actually cause that to happen as well. So keeping things at eye level in a really good reachable distance is a good idea. So don't be reaching up high and definitely, definitely don't put a 
chair and then step in the chair, right, to get it, or a table or anything, because what can happen there? You could, yeah, you could slip out of the chair and fall, or the chair might like flip over or something like that, and then that's going to be worse too, okay? So definitely don't do that as well. So I think too, another work order, right? Yeah, cabinets all same time, right near the toilet. <laughs> I think that's a great idea um, to keep those. <laughs> Erica's face is probably close up here. <laughs> I'm always like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's what I was talking about earlier with the the um, on the floor that film that gets on there. So and it is slick. So making sure that you know that's routinely cleaned and everything, so that way it's less likely to get slick whenever it gets wet. Um, I thought this was cool, you know, the neon light in the toilet. You can pick any color you want, too. I mean, but that way, the lighting is really helpful. You know, it's, it's very helpful. And, and they sell these at Walmart. So, and you can just put it in there, and um, it doesn't, like, float in the water. It's like a little device that hooks on the side of the toilet, and then you can put it to whatever color you want. So. <laughs> And then also like the night lights and the and the um, bathroom night lights in the hallway. The other reason I like the toilet light so much is because if the lights go off and just say the generator doesn't kick on, you know, like then you actually have a backup light, right? Because it's battery operated. Okay. And then it's good to also have what at your bedside. A flashlight, right? You should always have a flashlight at your bedside, just because that way if you need to see, it, it's very helpful, okay? And sometimes it's really hard to get to the light switches and everything. <laughs> Putting lights in the hallways is important too, um, in the kitchen, you know, you know, all those, that, that's really important. Um, hampers, do you guys use hampers? Do they use hampers in the bathroom? Yeah, yeah. So that's another trip hazard. You know, it's just one more bulky item in an already small consolidated space, right? There's not a lot of room in there. So then you add a hamper and then, you know, these beautiful fixtures that you have to have. And then, you know, I would use the, the beautiful stuff first and then the hamper, right? But, you know, just things like that. That, that can actually cause you to fall too. So decluttering is important, right? And then also, you know, think about cords, things of that nature, you should never have a cord across the floor, or anything like that. So other things are medications. Um, everybody's body is different. Everybody's body breaks medicines down differently. And sometimes you're taking medicines with you know, certain foods, which will make them react different. You're taking medications with other medications, which is gonna change that. So always make sure that when you spend time getting your medicine, for, you know, spend time with that pharmacist who wants to educate you on those side effects. We know that there is always a list of side effects, right? But you should really pay close attention to the dizziness, you know, things of that nature, because that again will increase an opportunity for you to fall, okay? So always ask about those, and that's why they have the pharmacy here today, right? So you can talk to them about medications and things of that nature. Changing positions as well. How many of you have stood up and you got lightheaded? Yeah, it happens a lot, doesn't it? So that is really important. So um, whenever you're, one thing I would do, or encourage you to do, is get your blood pressure laying down, which with recent studies says is the most um, correct blood pressure, laying down, and then I would get my blood pressure setting up, and then I would get my blood pressure standing up. So that way you kind of have an idea of what your blood pressure is in those three positions. And then when you start taking new medications, whether it's for urinary retention, for high blood pressure, um, for a head cold, you'll know if that's impacting your blood pressure and stuff too. And if you're standing up too quickly or you're just standing up like you always did, but now you're feeling dizzy or lightheaded, you can get an idea of what your blood pressure was normal so you can see how that medicine is impacting you now, okay? And that, that is something I really encourage you to do because a lot of falls are associated with medication changes. And then just also like if someone says, you know, 
You take this medicine at night. Why do you think they tell you to take it at night? Because it can make you drowsy. Right, make you drowsy. Other times, it can improve um, like blood flow to certain parts of your body, which makes your vessels bigger. So when you stand up, what's going to happen to your blood pressure? Exactly. So that's why they tell you to take it at night, because then you go to bed, and you don't have those unwanted effects all day. But a lot of people take their medicines just whenever they want to take it. So that's why it's important to follow those directions, because they're there for a reason. Okay, but a lot of those that you see take at night could be because of the drowsiness, but it also could be because it can drop your blood pressure. So unless you, um, you know, work night shift or something like that, it would kind of change that up a little bit. Okay, so let's see. Oh, and when you're sick, right? When you're sick, does your body change? Okay, you feel dizzy. Right? You ever had like just a sinus infection or just like an upper respiratory? Your, your hearing is muffled. You know, your um, nose is running, so it's distracting you. There's all these different things going on with you. You don't feel well. So again, that should be on your radar that you're at a much higher opportunity to do what? To fall. And I know this probably seems so small, but it is massive. Because some people, they just feel bad, and that's, they weren't doing as well as they normally do, and they just tripped and fell. You know, they knew that rug's been laying there for the last 25 years, but today they're just like, oh, they took some medicine, their ears were congested, their nose was running, you know, they're paying attention to everything else, and then they trip, and then they put their arm out, and what do you think they broke? Their wrist, right? So just like that, in a second, how many of you have little pets? I mean, not that little pushy button thing. <laughs> yeah. So you have little pets. So what what can they do to you? Trip. They can trip you. <laughs> right? They'll wrap around and everything else. So that's another thing. You know, just when you're out walking your pet, you have to be cautious as well. The first week that I worked here at Kindle, they were talking about a pet. And remember, Brittany, um, your, uh, Brittany was here for a long time. She was in there saying, well, they lost their pet, such and such, but we gave them another one. And I'm like, I can't just replace a pet like that. I'm not like that, you know? I'm a very advocate for animals, you know? So then I found out the pet was a button. I was like, what? Yeah, I thought it was like a real pet, like a real dog or something. But they just gave another one. So I was like, oh, you have, must have like a whole boatload of pets out back for everybody. I don't know. So, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. Um, so other thing is your vision. How many of you are getting your vision checked yearly or whatever they ask you to do? Very good. So your vision is really important to make sure you have it checked. It is so, so important. And the other thing is with the, the vision, if you have like long-standing high blood pressure, I mean, you know, they call high blood pressure now 130 over 80. So in the 80s, that was normal. Right, so it's changed quite a bit. So if you have that high level, high blood pressure for a while, it will actually impact your eyes. It impacts the vessels to your eyes and everything else to where you can't see. And so it's real important, again, taking care of your health, and then always make sure you go back and forth to the eye doctor. Cataracts, you know, are another thing. Um, you just, your lens becomes kind of clouded over, so then you can't see as well. And if you have eyes that are untreated for a long time, your retinas can actually detach from them as well, which then will lead to full blindness in that eye. So just different things and why it's important to make sure you go to your eye doctor as much as your doctor recommends. So yearly is definitely not outside the window. And if you're asked to wear corrective lenses, what should you do? You should wear them, right? So, and then and switch them up as they need to. It's just really important, but vision definitely plays a big part in falls, okay? So when you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, what do you need to put on? <laughs> your corrective lenses, if you have them, right? You know, put your glasses on, because if you're feeling your way, it may increase that opportunity for you to, to have that fall. And this just kind of shows you a little bit of like how your vessels can change over time in your eyes. And it's not something that you can just look in and see, right? It actually, somebody has to look in there and diagnose that. 
So you can't tell unless you actually went to that specialist to know. What do I say? As a cataract beside the eye. <laughs> you go ahead. So just again, uh, like I was talking about earlier, um, just un uncontrolled high blood pressure for a long time can impact your eyes significantly. Other things is hearing. So, you know, as, as we age, you already know this, you can't hear as well, right? Or depending on what you did as a career, and if you were, you know, used to loud noises and things like that, it can also impact your hearing. But hearing also encourages falls. So you should get your ears checked. You should, you know, follow that. If you're supposed to wear um, hearing aids, what should you do? Wear the hearing aids, right? Yes, it's real important because all of those things do contribute to falls. And I promise, I'm not making this up. It's like true evidence-based information, okay? Um, so just, again, you know, going to the audiologist, going to the ophthalmologist, all of that is so important. Your ears and your eyes, they play a whole lot. They're sensory items, right? So they play a huge role in your opportunity for a fall. But over years, like that conduction, it just loses and, and um, you lose that ability to hear well. And socks. Right? So I put these up, and I, I think the third one over is adorable. So, but, you know, something with a little bit of texture on the bottom of it to help with that sliding. Okay? So not too long ago, um, the, someone had fallen, and I went to the house, and I looked, and they had those big old woolly socks on. You know, the real fluffy, fluffy, high we can ice skate in these around the house socks on. So I'm like, I wonder why you fell. I don't know the socks <laughs> you know they play a huge role and then um, they have them in different brands and you can hit them again and see there's some more these are great socks do you guys own these do you wear these slip proof socks you should they're awesome like they're really nice and then um, hit it again and then you want to tie your shoes okay that's another important thing I face planted the other day because I stepped on my shoes train <laughs> So really, really important to tie your shoes up and stuff. And wearing the appropriate fitting shoe, okay? I've never been able to wear high heels or anything, um, but I, I like flat shoes, but um, you know, it's probably not the most appropriate thing for me because when they get wet and I step on the floor, what do you think happens? Yeah, you slip and fall. So really, really slick. So even being barefooted, having shoes on your feet, anything with water, it just increases that opportunity for a fall. Okay, so what do we do if we fall? Tuck and roll. <laughs> tuck and roll, right? That's fine. I was, no, relax, right? <laughs> so you're ready, we're gonna tuck and roll it. <laughs> but you should just relax, just, just relax. How do you think that's possible? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. So all the, all the information out there Whenever you do suffer a fall, the more limp you can make your body, the less of an opportunity you'll have for an injury, right? Because if you throw your arms and extend them out, what's gonna happen? You're gonna break your wrist, right? You're gonna break your, you could even break your, your bones here in your forearm. You can even dislocate your shoulder, you know, by falling so hard, okay? When you say tucking your chin, that is really good because you want to protect your head from bouncing. So when you think about a fall, it is important just to make sure that when you do fall, you need to pick a very soft area. Okay? <laughs> so, but it's really important that you don't hit your forehead, your side, um, or the side of your head too hard on the floor. So if you can kind of tuck whenever you fall, and like you said, just tuck and roll. You know, so just something to think about. Now, is that gonna happen when you fall? I don't know, right? But if we talk about it, and you think about it, but you're not fearful of it, then there's probably an opportunity that you're gonna get your brain in that reaction mode, okay? I do not suggest practicing it, okay? <laughs> So, but you know, when you think, think about that, you know, just really be cautious. It only takes one step, you know, to trip and fall, going down the stairwell, 
it only takes one you know step the wrong way you know that that causes you to fall down so in the event that you do because we know it could happen just go ahead and try to relax your body and don't try to stop yourself from falling because once you've gotten to go back on once you've gotten to where the other button that's okay I know it Because once you um, once you get to where he is, can you stop yourself from falling? No, no. no you can't. So how much does your head weigh? <laughs> Anybody ever held a bowling ball? Right? It's about the same. <laughs> so it's probably about eight pounds, somewhere up there. You know, if you think about it. So that's that's a lot of weight. Whenever you're off balance, it's just going to kind of pull you over, isn't it? So just be really, really cautious with that. Just know you're not going to be able to stop yourself at that time. So that's where we're thinking about, like, just going to ride it out. Just just relax and, and let it happen. And then what are you going to do? Scream. Be still. Relax again, right? Just lay there for a minute, okay? Don't try to get up immediately because if you have harmed yourself, what could happen? You can make it worse. So just lay there. You may not feel the pain today, but you know tomorrow when you get out of bed, you'll be really sore. That's why I always told people after a car wreck, they'd be like, oh, I don't even hurt. I'm like, yeah, wait till tomorrow when you get out of bed. So immediately your adrenaline is rushing. So you may not feel pain. You may not realize that you've harmed yourself. So that's why it's so important for you to take that time and just lay there for a couple minutes, okay? And just relax. How many of you keep your emergency pet on you okay that's like less than five percent <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll work on that all right so uh, the you definitely want to keep something close to you right do you all keep a uh, cell phone cell phone on you yeah so all of that's important because that way you don't have to get up and you can call for help even if you call for help just for somebody to come help you get up um, but you definitely don't want to get up if you're hurting, right? Then you, then you call the rescue squad and they can come and assist you in getting up or taking you to the hospital at your choice, whatever you would think is best at that time and they think is best, okay? Does that make sense? There are ways you can get up and there's like this little step-by-step -step that you know, Danielle just like bugged right on by, you know, earlier. You know, hit the back button, yeah. Or delete, delete is good. Yeah. So this kind of goes through different ways, you know, that you can stand up. You probably, you probably can't see this. I, I can't see it neither when it's right in front of me on the computer. But uh, there's different ways you can kind of like, if you're laying on your back or you're laying on your side, you can kind of roll over on your belly once you feel like it, and then you can kind of crawl to like a chair or a bed. Not a table, nothing like that, because what might happen if you pull up on the table? Right, by falling you. So the only stable things that I would consider doing would be like a big chair, a couch, or a bed. And then you can work your way of, of getting up if you don't think you're injured. In the event that when you're doing that, if anything starts to hurt, what are you gonna do? Stop. Stop. Just stop, right? Okay, and then call for help. So, but I definitely encourage you to keep your pet close to you or like your cell phone in your pocket, you know, things of that nature, okay? Okay, now I'm ready. <laughs> so, the fear of falling, I think she's beating me up. What do y'all think? <laughs> so I, I uh, like I said earlier, my goal is definitely not to scare you or anything like that. I just want you to kind of think about things, you know? Um, I think it's important to, to realize, you know, like, oh, and maybe you've already thought of this. Maybe you've already been through a significant incident. I, I don't know, but the, I would like for you to just think about it. And then I do have like this little survey that's only a few questions and you can look at it and go right through it and it will give you an idea of where you are with your fear of falling, okay? Because when you think about like just going out here and stepping off the, um, the curb or things like that, those are opportunities for you, for you to fall, okay? So um, just thinking about the environment and maybe your daily routine when you're filling the sheet out, all right? So, do you guys have any questions? Yes? 
You go ahead, ma'am, and then I'll meet you. Me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have wondered sometimes whether the bathroom floors here could be made with a textured surface, as they do in our swimming pool changing room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they that do. would be a huge improvement. Yeah. And I think they could do that in every bathroom. I agree. Uh, why they don't? I mean, why we have to have slick bathrooms? I do not know. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of nuts. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. I think I'm not going to let her have the microphone. <laughs> we, we have to budget it, though. <laughs> Just put in a work order. <laughs> I do agree, though, because that is huge. And honestly, that is what you're starting to see in facilities and healthcare settings. It's just like 40 years late, you know? It's like, it took all this to get to that point, but they are seeing it, and even in homes, like when people are building houses, they're, they're actually looking at those things. So I definitely think as time goes and renovations goes, that could de definitely be something to make it a safer place for you. Well, people want it to be sexy. Oh, they want sexy, roughly. You know, very, very up-to-date yes. and, and Italian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Ruth. Well, you always talk, people talk about how to get up if you fall and then you don't think you hurt yourself. Go to a chair. But suppose you're outside and you don't have any chairs. How do you get up? That's a good question. And that's one reason I just can't. Oh, so Ruth was asking, you know, we mentioned earlier like falling in your house where we have a couch or things that we can use to get up. But what if you fall outside? So what are some things that you can do? And really it depends on where you fell, right? Um, but the thing is, that's why I can't stress to you enough about having a cell phone and your pet close to you. So you can call for help and you can just stay there unless you're in immediate danger from somebody driving around the, you know, um, the driveway or something and hitting you. But, but that's what I would encourage you. techniques for getting up? Outside? Yeah, if there is enough, you can, same thing, kind of, you would roll over onto your stomach, pull your knees up, and then push your hands and push yourself up that way if you don't have anything to grab onto. If you don't have anything to grab onto, I don't know that if you don't have the upper body strength and the body, you know, legs, you may not be able to. So, and I can let our, our uh, occupational therapist back here help answer that question too, if she has something to add on to that as well. But that's a great question, so. And we have had people come outside, and then they just had to lay there until somebody came, yeah. That's a great question. So, did you have something to add for her? Will you ask her? I have been asked that question before, and I could only give the same answer that you did. If, you're, if you fall and you're in the middle of a field, the only thing that you can try to do is to get under something to push yourself up and then call for help. Yeah, so same same thing, just depending on where you are. But the other thing is too, I'd be really careful, like if you, you know, like there's a birdhouse or when there's metal sticks in the ground, I wouldn't be pulling on that because you may actually harm yourself even more. So I will do some more research on that, Ruth, see if I can't find more. And then she said that she hasn't been able to find any more either. So somebody else had, yes, ma'am? I wanted to comment on the fact that the slick bathroom floors, you can clean them. That's why, I, of course, if we all had slick floors. Um, I had had bathrooms with cork uh, before, but I never felt like they were really clean. So that's a, a problem to, for safety versus right. cleanliness. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good point. So. Um, did you have a survey for them? Can you hand them out? So here's just a little quick survey. I just wanted you to be able to do it while I was still here. So that way, if you wanted to ask questions or anything, I'm happy to answer them. So, but thank you for letting me talk to you for 45 minutes about falling. Sounds good. Thank you.
and they're out on the rehab table out in the home. Yeah, maybe Thank you all very much. <laughs> 